So I want to just talk you through uh, the practical that you'll be doing um, on Wednesday. We're going to try and find out the concentration of this guy here, ammonium iron sulfate. So we, so this is our unknown concentration, and we're going to do it by a, a, a potassium manganate titration, which we've looked at. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to fill up my burette with potassium manganate. I'm going to start with solution A. That is that guy, solution A. I'm going to take 50 centimetres cube of solution A and dilute it down to make solution B. Bottled life, aren't they? With how much? Yeah, so it's supposed to be a volumetric block. So that's going to have, thank you, it's going to have 250 centimetres cube there. I'm going to take that solution B and do a titration with it. So I'm going to be adding manganate iron. I'm going to add some acid in as well to just make sure it works. That is the iron that's in my solution B. Um, and we'll get to the end point. That will give me a titer. And then we can run through the calculations to find the concentration, the original concentration of solution A. Do we need to know the other equation for this one? You said the one to that. No, no, you don't. It's just that one you need to know. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing I'm going to take, I'm going to take solution A, and I'm going to dilute it down by popping it into um, my volumetric glass. Um, we need 50 centimeters cube for this. This is a pipette. This has 25, so I need to do it twice. So um, uh, you'll need to do it twice as well. I'll make it in that. And again, you know, I'm going to assume that the um, pipettes and everything are washed and all of that, because otherwise we'll be here all day. So that there is 25. So put 25 into there like so, and then I need to repeat the process. The reason why is it's too concentrated at the moment to be able to get the decent uh, tighter. So I need to dilute it down with a bit of the old distilled water. Why are we using 50 instead of 25? Again, it's to get a good tighter, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, want it, you want it to be a reasonable, a reasonable tighter. Right, so that is the first 25. It's good practice for you when you do it as well. How do they wash the pipette? Uh, distilled water, first of all, and then with a little bit of this solution. There we go. Right, yeah. So that's diluted down. I also need to fill up my burette with my potassium for manganese. Again, I'm going to assume this is all washed through. Um, so I've got tap closed, which is good. I'll bring it down. The problem is, is it's really... What do you reckon it is the um, the problem though, to an extent with it being so dark? You can't see the numbers. Yeah, quite difficult to see the numbers, isn't it? Uh, right. So while that's doing, um, I'll leave that. I'm going to top this up with some um, distilled water. Oh, Cheers. Whoa. <laughs> Going mad. And then, as ever, I do the final little bit with a pipette just to make sure it's all okay. There we go. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Right, so, um, and then I'll shake this up just to make sure it's all uh, mixed nicely. Um, while that's doing, obviously you need to get the air, so let's hope this uh, viewer actually works. Oh, yes, okay. So, <laughs> see, so it's nice and easy to see that there aren't any um, air bubbles in there. What is that again? The solution? Uh, that's potassium manganese solution. So that's the MnO4 minus thing that I'm going to be adding. Right, so I will remove that there. Um, my reading, it is quite difficult, you can't really see the bottom of the meniscus, so, um, but the reading there, if you can make a note, my initial titer is 3.80 centimeters cubed. Uh, you want to avoid spilling this on yourself as well. Yeah. You'll do this on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, give it a go, yeah. I'm, I'm only going to do it like a rough one, um, gives you an idea. Right, so I've got my solution B all nicely mixed up. So um, I now need to prepare 25 of my solution B into my conical flask. So I use a new pipette for this because the other one's got solution A in it. So, right on. Straight away. And in that goes into my spot. So I'm now, well, I'm almost ready to do it. What do I need to add to get the titration to work? I do, yeah. So I'm going to also add, do I need to worry about how much acid I've got? It does, as long as I've got lots of acid there, it's okay. So I'm going to add about 10 centimeters cubed of sulfuric acid, just to give me those H plus ions to make sure it's all hunky dory. Um, this has actually already been acidified. Can anybody think why? This is an iron two solution, why it's been acidified. What happens to iron 2 if we leave it sat around over the weekend? Yeah, it become iron 3, so we need to put some acid in to just stop that. Stop that. Right, so a little bit of sulfuric acid in. Um, just, if you need to do this because otherwise your titration won't work. Uh, so it's a common error that people say, it's not worked. I didn't know. Uh, in it goes. Sorted. Okay, so I'm now ready to go. Yeah, so what will happen, as I add it, can you see that the, the uh, purple colour is disappearing? Yeah, so, it yeah, so I'm, I'm going to add it, and, and the end point will be when that purple colour remains. It does take, it doesn't disappear straight away. <laughs> I've got absolutely no idea how much it is. <laughs> because I haven't done it uh, for quite a while. But, so we do a rough one. It'd probably be about 25 or so. I'm just gonna get that bit of it. But it's quite nice how the um, purple color disappears, isn't it? Uh, it is, it is originally green because of the iron two ions in there. Um, but you're, you basically want the, uh, uh, like a, the MN2 is kind of like a pale pink, but you, because it's very pale, you don't see it. Uh, so I'm now down to about 22 or so. And it is taking slightly longer to, uh, <laughs> Disappear. Why is there such a sudden end point? I know because the bar. Yeah, it's your acid base, your acid alkali titration. You get a sudden shift in pH. Yeah, which means that your indicator, because your indicator is, your indicator is generally a weak acid. Yeah. 
And so the protonated form of your weak acid is a different color to the unprotonated form. And so because you get a sudden change in pH, it suddenly shifts it to the other color. Okay. Not for this, or not for this so much, because um, this is a redox one. Oh, yeah, so that's it pretty much. I'd probably say if I did that again, it'd probably be, I'd probably add in a couple of drops too many. Mm -hmm. As soon as it goes pink. Yeah, that's it. That I, yeah, as soon as you've got that pink colour, it is done. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we're now going to use our uh, titer to work out the concentration of this guy here. So, I have got a volume and I've got a concentration, so what can I work out? Moles. Moles of MnO4 minus is going to be concentration times volume over a thousand. So that's 0 0.020 times my volume 25.90 over a thousand. And that gives me 5.18 times 10 to the minus 4 moles. What do I need to relate that to now? Uh, because it's only there's only one in I'm, I haven't regenerated in the other ones I had to generate the fe2 plus to then do the well it wasn't it was iodine okay. but uh, this is what I want to find out and that's how the it's the same equation for both so it's and a nice easy one to use the fe on the left hand side because you added that as a reaction yeah, yeah. so one manganate requires five iron, so what do I need to find out my moles of iron? That's my five. Yeah, great. It equals 2.59 times 10 to the minus three mole. What volume was that in? 225. Well, that was in 25. So, that was the moles of, so what about moles of Fe2 plus in 250, which is my, which that volumetric flask is going to be times by 10. So 2.59 times 10 to the minus 3 times 10 is 2.59 times 10 to the minus 2. No, no, that's just to get the reaction to work. Okay, this is now the tricky bit. So, that was in, that was the moles that were in my volumetric flask. So I took 25 out. What, the original solution, how much did I add? That was in 50, so originally that was in, that number of moles was in 50. So my concentration of solution A is that number of moles, but that was in originally 50 that I took out with my burette times by a thousand to get it into moles per decimeter cubed. Yes, and minus two. Oh, so yeah. So is it in centimeters cubed to begin with, and then you have to times by a thousand to get? To what here? Why are you times by a thousand? Oh, to get it, I divide by one to find out how much is in one centimetre cube. Yeah. Times by a thousand to get it into one decimetre cube. But is that because it was the same number of same number of moles in fifty as there were in two hundred and fifty? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I added. This was my two hundred and fifty that I made up, but I added. You just want to get the specific volume of it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's two point five nine times ten to the minus two. Divide it by 50 and then times by a thousand, which gives me it's been 0.518 yeah. moles per decimeter cubed. 